Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Mark Sertica, physical therapist. Today, I'm going to discuss high intensity resistance and impact training as it relates to the prevention and management of osteoporosis and osteopenia. Before diving into the content, I wanna discuss my why for creating this video. If you search YouTube for exercise recommendations for osteoporosis or for middle age and older adults in general, you'll often come across a lot of low level exercises that give the perception that these individuals are inherently fragile and less capable. However, if you're one of those individuals watching, I want you to know that I think of you like an athlete, regardless of your age or function, and I'm hoping this video provides some education and empowerment to help you along the way. Osteoporosis is defined by the NIH as a skeletal disorder characterized by compromised bone strength, predisposing a person to an increased risk of fracture. Obviously, fractures can occur from falls, but certain fractures, like vertebral fractures, can actually be asymptomatic and go undiagnosed. And although osteoporosis is often associated with women, especially postmenopausal women, it's still very prevalent and problematic in males as well. I want to discuss the work of a group of researchers in Australia who recently published their data regarding the efficacy and effectiveness of high intensity resistance and impact training for men and women with osteopenia or osteoporosis. They did two primary studies. The first study examined healthy postmenopausal women over the age of 58 who were classified as having osteopenia or osteoporosis at their hip or spine. The second study examined otherwise healthy men over the age of 45 who exhibited osteopenia or osteoporosis at the lumbar spine or proximal femur. Both groups underwent eight months of high intensity resistance and impact training with a one to two month familiarization period to learn the movements, technique, and slowly ramp up. Twice per week, the participants completed 30 minute supervised sessions that included deadlifts, squats, overhead presses, and jumping chin-ups with drop landings. The barbell-based movements consisted of five sets of five repetitions at 80 to 85% of their one rep max or greater, and they were asked to keep their rating of perceived exertion high. If a participant was able to perform seven repetitions with acceptable form, weight was progressed by 2.5 kilograms. The tempo consisted of a two second eccentric and one second concentric. The impact training required participants to grab a pull-up bar with an underhand narrow grip, jump as high as possible while pulling themselves up and releasing the bar at the height of their jump before landing on the floor. Progressions included increasing the height of the jump and chin up, raising the bar and gradually increasing the intensity of the impact landing by shifting from a shock absorbing strategy to a stiff legged flat footed landing. The participants would do two sets of five deadlifts at 50 to 70% of their one rep max as a warm up, then do their sets of deadlifts, superset overhead presses and impact landings and finish with squats. A one minute rest was given between sets. Before you criticize the rest times, you have to understand the context. Exercise only works if it gets done. There are a lot of barriers to exercise, time being one of them. So the researchers were trying to make adherence to the exercise program as high as possible by fitting 20 sets of work into 30 minute sessions twice per week. That's doable by most people's standards. A lot of outcome measures were assessed, such as height, weight, functional performance, and measures of bone, muscle, and fat. The women were compared to a home-based, low-intensity exercise control group, and the men were compared to a control group and an intervention group that consisted of isometric axial compression exercises twice per week using a very specific device. For simplicity, I'm going to discuss the results in a combined fashion because I want to present the big picture information, but understand that there were differences found between the men and the women in these separate studies. Most importantly, high intensity resistance and impact training did not cause any fractures in the males or females. And for those who had vertebral fractures at baseline, there was no progression in severity. Additionally, over the course of thousands of training sessions across all of the participants, there were only three minor adverse events. 
two mild low back strains, and one case of knee soreness that resulted in a total of four missed sessions, which is pretty impressive. There was a reduction in thoracic kyphosis in relaxed and standing tall postures for the women, so they got a little taller, and a reduction in thoracic kyphosis in a standing tall posture for men. For bone, there was preservation or improvements at many sites, and there were also improvements in muscle strength, power, and physical function on tests such as five times sit to stand, timed up and go, and functional reach test. The researchers weren't directly measuring the impact of this intervention on fall risk, but the functional performance tests are often associated with fall risk. And a recent Cochrane review reported that exercise reduces the number of falls by 23% and may reduce the number of people experiencing fractures by 27%. And a 2016 paper showed that increased leg muscle density is associated with reduced odds of being a faller. So there is the potential implication that this type of exercise might reduce the risk of falls in addition to the specific benefits measured in this study and all of the other health benefits associated with exercise. You might have some reservations about this type of exercise if you have a joint replacement, osteoarthritis, or some other condition or comorbidity, but I assure you there's usually a safe starting point for most people that a licensed healthcare provider can help you find. Based on this information, I have two practical recommendations for you. Number one, if you are in any way concerned about your risk of falls or osteoporosis, please communicate that to your primary care physician. Both of these things are multifactorial and there might be treatment options available to you beyond just exercise. Number two, let your medical doctor know that you're interested in working under the supervision of a physical therapist or another qualified provider or seek one out for yourself so they can guide you through a progressive exercise routine. Lastly, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. 90% of bone density is acquired by the age of 18 in females and age 20 in males. You don't have to participate in resistance training as a kid, but it can have beneficial effects on bone health, on muscle, and despite popular belief, it's quite safe. As a whole, we're not great at meeting the physical activity guidelines, so we need to help kids and adolescents find fun, meaningful, and sustainable forms of physical activity that will set them up for success to be healthy adults. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video provided a little bit of empowerment, education, and encouragement, because I do encourage you to find somebody who can walk you through a progressive resistance and impact training routine. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Peace.